Well, hi once again, and welcome to another edition of Jay's Retro Toys and Games. It's Monday, June 6, 2022. This is episode 21, and we're on part two of our continuing look at the toy line that has basically just started in 1981, but it was really the television show, the cartoon show, that really took the toy line to its full potential. That's right. We're looking at Masters of the Universe, the continuing look, part two today on Jay's Retro Toys and Games. Okay, I'm Jason Acanio, welcoming you back to another edition of Chase Retro Toys and Games for Monday, June 6th. Hope you had a great weekend. We're ready for another edition. And this time it's episode 21, the continuing look at the Masters of the Universe. Didn't mention He-Man because He-Man in its own right is its own character. And as we go down the line in the Masters of the Universe, we'll be looking at individual histories of all of the characters of the toys but we're mainly focusing right now on the toy line itself and uh, when we last left off we we started with the origin or uh, the history of the and the origin of the franchise the history inversions we looked at all of the series overview and some of the main characters which we had delved into but not really a uh, full dealt into it we're, like I said, we scratch the surface and kind of build you up on things because we don't want to give you so much information that it's going to like explode your brain or anything of that sort. So we're little by little, you know, pacing these shows so we can get a lot in. Part two of the uh, Masters of the Universe now starts with the original action figures and mini comics from 1981 to 1982. The Masters of the Universe toy line was created by Mattel in 1981 and first released to stores in 1982 as five and a half inch action figures as opposed to the three and three quarter inch size used by Kenner's Star Wars and Hasbro's G.I. Joe, a real American hero lines. The two main characters, He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe, and his arch enemy Skeletor, evil lord of destruction, were the first released in action figure form along with other core characters of the series. Man-at-Arms, Heroic Master of Weapons, Beast Man, Skeletor's Savage Henchman, and Battle Cat, He-Man's Fighting Tiger. Now, later on that year, the first wave of action figures in 1982 would also include Teela, Heroic Warrior Goddess, Merman, even Evil Ocean Warlord, Stratos, Heroic Winged Warrior, and... Zodak, the Cosmic Enforcer. The Tila action figure was originally proposed as representing both the Sorceress character when wearing the figure's snake armor and the Tila, ca ca the Tila character when without the snake armor, as Mattel believed there would not be enough demand for two female action figures in the initial wave. Alongside the first wave of figures was, were the Battle Ram, the Mobile Launcher, and the Wind Raider, Assault La Lander, Vehicles and the playset Castle Grayskull, Fortress of Power and Mayor's Mystery. These first figures, as well as Castle Grayskull, were primarily designed by Mark Taylor, although the final production sculpt of the original He Man action figure was completed by Tony Guerrero, and the first vehicles were designed by Ted Mayer. Brief descriptions of the characters would appear on the packaging and box art with illustrations by Errol McCarthy, Rudy Oberio. Oberero, William Garland, William George, and others. However, the lore of Masters of the Universe would be first fully explored through the mini comics that accompanied the action figures throughout the duration of the line, with 49 distinct comics being issued from 1981 until 1987. The original four mini comics, He Man and the Power Sword, The King of Castle Grayskull, Battle in the Clouds and the Vengeance of Skeletor were made by Mattel in 1981 and written by Donald F. Glutt with artwork by Alfredo Alcala. 
He-Man is introduced in the first mini-comic, He-Man and the Power Sword, as a wandering barbarian leaving behind his jungle tribe on Eternia. The world of Eternia is initially depicted as dealing with the aftermath of a great war that has devastated once powerful civilizations, leaving behind their fantastical machinery and weapons. The events of the war have also opened a rift between dimensions, which has allowed the evil warlord Skeletor to travel into Eternia. This inaugural incarnation of Skeletor sets its sights on obtaining both halves of the Power Sword, originally split in two in these early stories, in order to gain entry into the ancient castle Grayskull, depicted in these early comics as being inhabited by the ghostly spirit of Castle Grayskull. The main premise being that whomever obtains control of Castle Grayskull will gain the power to become master of the universe. To combat Skeletor, He-Man is given special powers, armor, and weapons by the sorceress. She has green skin in her debut appearance and is wearing the snake armor that came with the original Tila action figure. Instead of adorning her more familiar bird-like attire as seen in the Filmation series. He-Man, not yet with the dual identity of Prince Adam, is supported in these initial stories by his heroic allies, Battle Cat, without the dual form of Cringer, Man-at-Arms, Tila, and Stratus, the winged warrior who erroneously came fighting on the side of Skeletor in the initial mini-comic. Skeletor, in turn, enlists the help of the brutish uh, ape-like Beast-Man and fish-like Merman to battle He-Man or his heroic warriors. Now, other major characters introduced the following year in these early waves of action figures included He-Man's allies, Ram Man, Manny Faces, and Zoar, whose sculpt was taken from Big Jim's toy lines, Eagle of Danger Peak, along with Skeletor's evil warriors, Triclops, Trapjaw, Panthor, which is the Skeletor Savage Cat, Screech, Faker, and Evil Lynn. The last figure released in this wave, she would not yet feature in any Masters of the Universe media until her permanent role, prominent role in the Filmation animated series. The Attack Track Vehicle and the Point Dread and Talon Fighter playset were also released in the 1983 line. The second series, consisting of seven new mini-comics and released in 1982-83, was produced by DC Comics, written by Gary Cohn, and featured artwork by Mark Tejera. These mini-comics would devote several issues toward introducing the new action figures into the line. Cohn did not continue the same canon as was set in his the first four mini-comics. He-Man's new ally, Ram Man, is initially tricked into fighting on the side of Skeletor in He-Man Meets Ram Man. Manny Faces is introduced in the ordeal of Manny Faces as the interior actor turned into a monster by Skeletor, freed by the sorceress, only to be magically possessed by three multiple personalities, man, monster, and robot. Skeletor's evil warriors also get their own introductory mini-comics, with Triclops as a skilled swordsman mercenary in The Terror of Triclops, and Trapjaw portrayed in The Menace of Trapjaw as a criminal from another dimension. In these pre-filmation stories, the primary characters of Prince Adam, Cringer, Orko, and Evil Inn did not yet feature in the series, although the Tyrian Palace and Royal Court with King Randor and Queen Marlena, both yet named yet unnamed, looking decidedly older than in the later series, are featured in several of these DC mini comics, as are the mystical Falcon Zoar, not yet an alternate form of the sorceress. And the attack track, Battle Machine, based on the toy and not yet a robotic voice van-like vehicle as in the Filmation cartoon. The storyline concept of Tila as the secret daughter of the sorceress, albeit as a clone, and adopted daughter of Man-at-Arms was first introduced at this time as well as in the mini-comic The Tale of Tila. A special comic and record entitled... The Power of Point Dread, Danger at Castle Grayskull, was also produced for the Talon Fighter and Point Dread playset. Additional waves of action figures, creatures, vehicles, and playsets were released every year until 1987, totaling 70 distinct figures in all, including 24 creatures, 12 vehicles, 6 playsets, 
and 10 accessories with the final overseas releases from the original line coming from Italy in 1988. A major proponent of the 1980s action figure boom, Masters of the Universe figures proved to be very popular and were produced and marketed all over the world. Most of the action figures were made in Taiwan and Malaysia. However, Mattel also had production facilities in the United States, Mexico, France, Spain, and joint ventures with Leo Toys of India, Top Toys of Argentina, Estrella of Brazil, Rotoplast of Venezuela, and Takara of Japan. Then in July of 1982, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe would appear for the first time in the pages of DC Comics with DC Comics Presents issue number 47 in the story from Eternia with Death, followed by a special insert comic in many DC's titles from November of 82 entitled Fate is the Killer. In these first two DC Masters of the Universe stories, Superman ends up on Eternia, joining with He-Man to combat Skeletor and his minions. He-Man's original DC comic run finished up with a three-issue miniseries at the start of 1983, all written by Paul Kupperberg, with artwork by Kurt Swan and George Tuzuka. Now, or Tuska, these issues would introduce the Eternian royal family, most notably Prince Adam, in number 47, and his transformation into He-Man in the series. This version of Adam, however, was originally depicted wearing a blue vest and portrayed as somewhat of a philanderer, rather than his later more wholesome pink vest-wearing character. Also unique to these issues, Adam transforms inside the Cavern of Power instead of his more famous by the Power of Grayskull line, the sorceress, now residing in the Cavern of Power, is still depicted wearing the Tila snake armor and is often referred to as the goddess throughout the series. Other entries into the Masters of the Universe mythos, such as Kranger as the alter ego of Battle Cat, Zodak as a neutral cosmic enforcer, Stratos as leader of his home world of Avion, and Adam's mother, Queen Marlena, as an astronaut hailing from Earth, were all partly introduced in these early DC issues. Now, in 1983, Masters of the Universe would debut perhaps its most famous incarnation with the animated series He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, created by Filmation under the direction of executive producer Lou Scheimer. The cartoon made its television debut on September 5th, 1983, with the episode The Diamond Ray of Disappearance. Running through two seasons, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe was one of the first animated series produced directly for weekday syndication as opposed to reruns prim primarily based on Saturday mornings, totaling 130 episodes with each season of 65 episodes stretching across 13 weeks. The series' last episode, The Cold Zone, on November 21st, 1985. Similar to the comics that came before, the series is set on Eternia, which is ruled by King Randor and Queen Marlena, visibly younger in age and with more colorful attire than their previous comic version. Their son, Prince Adam, now wearing his more familiar pink vest, pretends to be somewhat lazy, clumsy, and irresponsible, much like his pet tiger, Cringer, depicted in the series as being very cowardly and with the ability to speak. For the first time, Prince Adam is shown to transform into He-Man by holding aloft his magic sword and saying the magic words, By the power of Grayskull, I have the power. It is revealed in the introduction that Prince Adam's secret identity of He-Man is known only by the sorceress of Castle Grayskull, now with the more familiar bird-like costume, who often takes the form of Zoar the Falcon, Man at Arms now sporting a mustache, and often referred to by his first name, Duncan, he is portrayed as a scientific inventor as well as a warrior. And Orko, making his full debut as a mainstay in the franchise, Orko is presented as a floating childlike Trollian magician, often used for comic relief and as a point of view character for children. Rounding out the main cast of heroes is Tila, now firmly depicted with red hair. She is the captain of the Royal Guard, the adopted daughter of Mad in Arms, and secret child of the sorceress, who serves as a teasing and semi-antagonistic love interest of Adam and He-Man throughout the series. 
Also featuring in the series with sem semi-regularity are Stratos, the flying leader of the bird people of Avion, Ram Man, portrayed as a dim-witted but likable bouncing warrior, and appearing with much less frequency in the series are He-Man's recurring allies Zodak, less neutral and more of an ominous cosmic peacekeeper, often assisting He-Man, Manny Faces, presented this time as a master of disguise, an actor who occasionally employs his abilities to help He-Man, Buzz Off, leader of a race of bee people, Fisto debuts as powerful loner and adversary of He-Man before joining forces. Mechanek, who is a loyal warrior with a bionic neck, searching for his lost son. Robot Roboto, robotic alien explorer marooned on Eternia. Cyclone, spinning like tornado-like warrior who appears without a backstory. Moss Man, transforming plant being and spy, and several characters that would not receive action figure releases in the original line, such as Lizard Man, the royal archaeologist Mel Melaktha, Trollians Drael and Montork, Avion Bird People Delora and Hawk, Adam's grandfather King Miro, Squinch and the Widgets, and the wise and ancient dragon Granimar. Now, he-Man's nemesis, the evil wizard Skeletor, now famously portrayed by voice actor Alan Oppenheimer as a cackling and more comedic villain, still wishes to conquer Castle Grayskull and learn of its secrets, but also now desires to take over the royal palace and rule Eternia, often seeking ancient and mysterious beasts and artifacts to try to stop He-Man and his allies. Skeletor often hosts his rogues gallery inside his headquarters, Snake Mountain, gathered around his bone-filled throne, plotting and peering through a magic orb to spy on He-Man and his friends. Often this group of evil minions consists of the cunning female sorcerer Evil Lynn, making her film de full debut into the Masters of the Universe mythos as Skeletor's most dangerous counterpart in the Filmation series, and his most frequent sidekicks, the bumbling Beast Man who possesses the ability to control various creatures through telepathy, and the equally inept weapon-armed Trapjaw. Skeletor's original henchmen in the cartoon also include Merman, Triclops, and Skeletor's purple pet feline, Panthor. Other henchmen making a few appearances later in the series are Webstore, one of Skeletor's more intelligent henchmen, often paired with Cobra Khan, Cobra Khan menacing Repton, able to spray sleeping gas from his Cobra hood, Too Bad, which is the bumbling henchman with two often arguing heads, Spike Or, depicted as possibly Skeletor's most dim-winded minion in all of the Filmation series. Modulok, deranged and mutated scientist, once known as Galian Nycroft. Clawful, a far more cunning villain in this version than other representations of the character. And Whiplash, appearing the most out of the later henchmen. Some of Skeletor's rogues would appear only once in the Filmation cartoons, such as Faker, appearing only briefly as a magical clone of He-Man, before being tossed into the bottomless abyss outside Castle Grayskull, Jitsu, called Chopper in the script, Batros, Icer, Fangman, Dragoon, and Strongarm. Other villains, not allied with Skeletor, would occasionally appear as well, such as the powerful wizard Count Marzo, the plant demon Evil Seed, Kothos, Shakoti, Negator, and the rabbit-like space pirate Plundor, to name a few. Well, despite the limited animation techniques that were used to produce the series, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe was notable for breaking the boundaries of censorship that had severely restricted the narrative scope of children's TV programming in the 1970s. For the first time, a cartoon series could feature a muscular superhero who engaged in on-screen combat Although most of the time, wrestling style moves were utilized instead of direct violence. The cartoon was also groundbreaking in that it was produced in connection with a marketing a line of toys as advertising directly to children was controversial during this period. As an attempt to mitigate the negative publicity generated by these controversies, a life lesson or moral of the story was played at the end of each episode, which was usually tied to the action or central theme of the episode in question, although in the United Kingdom, the closing morals were often edited out of the original broadcasts. The series featured the voices, voice talents of John Irwin, 
who starred as He-Man, Prince Adam, Beast Man, Ram Man, Webster, Whiplash, and many others. The aforementioned Alan Oppenheimer, voicing Skeletor, Man-at-Arms, Battle Cat, Cringer, Merman, Buzz Off, and many others. Linda Gary, as much of the female cast with Tila, the Sorceress, Evelyn, and Queen Marlena. And executive producer Lou Scheimer, providing the voice work for a multitude of other characters such as Orko, King Randor, Stratus, Trapjaw, Triclops, Manny Faces, Mechanic, Fisto, Clawful, Cobra Khan, Spycor, and Too Bad, to name a few. The series was often produced by Lou Scheimer and Hal Sutherland and directed by Gwen Wetzler, Marsh Lamore, Lou Kachavis, Kacha, uh, Kachav, Kachavis, Lou Kachavis, that's right, Steve Clark, Ernie Schmidt, Ed Friedman, and others, with Tom Sido serving as a main storyboard artist along with Tom Tataranoskowitz. Wow. Warren Greenwood, Robert Lamb, Don Manuel, Bob Arkwright, and many other contributors or contributors. And writers on the show included Larry Dottillo, David Wise, Robbie London, Michael Reeves, Doug Booth, J. Bryn Stevens, and many others, including early script writing work from Babylon 5 creator J. Michael Straczynski, Paul Dini of Batman the Animated Series fame, and one episode, Battle Cat, by DC Fontana of Star Trek fame. The series, although still popular, would not be renewed for a third season in 1985. However, the characters would make occasional guest appearances in the She-Ra Princess of Power series, which was set in the same universe and followed the same continuity. The She-Ra series began with a five-part animated serial, which was later condensed into the animated movie The Secret of the Sword, released theatrically in the spring of of 1985 and featuring most of the main characters from both cartoons. The characters would continue to appear in guest roles throughout the Shira series, as well as a Christmas special. The very last appearance of Filmation's He-Man and Skeletor is in one of the final Shira episodes entitled Assault on the Hive, airing December 13, 1986. And we will pause there because we're out of time. <laughs> So when we come back, we'll be looking at some games to kind of take our minds off of the toys section for a little bit. The next game up on our list of uh, stuff that we're going to be looking at is the ever-popular Rumicube. That's right, Rumicube. Long way to go here. It's going to be a short one indeed, but Rumicube, and then we was looking at something else too. There's two more other games. There's another game too uh, as well. On Wednesday and Friday. Oh, yeah, the ever-popular Toss Across. That's another one, and that's one of our logo games, you know? So we'll be looking at two games, Wednesday and Friday, and then back to our toy series. But this time, when we start up next Monday, we'll be looking at She-Ra, the Princess of Power, and that series and how it continued on because I want to see... Uh, yeah, I want to see... Okay, yep. It's got a lot to go with. Wow. Yep. It's a plot. Wow. Doesn't really have that much. Just tells tells of the characters, the cast, and everything. So really, what we're really looking at here, um, toys and uh, oh, the Princess of Power. Okay, that's what it is. Yes, that's what we'll really be looking at is the toys, but it's all under the Masters of the Universe toy line. So when we come back to that, we'll be looking at the part three of the toy line with more filmation, uh, Masters of the Universe action figures and mini comics from 84 and 85, the introduction of She-Ra and the Secret of the Sword, the Princess of Power animated series. I mean, this is going to go on for quite a while here. The toy line, the later years, and the power of Grayskull, home video, International public, it, it's a long list here, friends. We'll even talk about that movie that they had before, <laughs> which was a disgrace to the cinema and really killed the whole storyline of the Masters of the Universe. Well, as they say, some things you try in the, in the cinema to try to bring it to a more realistic thing. I think if they could bring it back in today's cinema uh, or movie theaters, I think what they really need to do is bring back a bodybuilder who could 
take the form of kind of like what Arnold Schwarzenegger had or some of that sort or Dolph Lundgren because Dolph Lundgren was the original He-Man in the 87 movie. But I think in this terms, they need to stick to a to a script that really takes on the cartoon series but make it more realistic for even adults in the theaters to kind of appreciate this. Because they are going on next year, 40... Well, let's see. Next year would mark the 40th anniversary of the comic book, or not the comic book, but the filmation series. And then two years ago, we had the 40th anniversary of the toy line production. So we're right now in that warming up of the lot of anniversaries going on. 40th anniversary here, 40th, 40th anniversary there. And of course, there's a 40th anniversary coming up of um, Knight Rider coming up later on. But that's which was a toy, by the way. They even had a toy in a kit car. We'll be talking later on that, probably in September. So all of that coming up on the next edition, episode number 22 (laughs) is going to be Rummy Cube. And we'll hope that you will have a great uh, time listening to it. Remember, thanks for all your support and keeping our programs continually going. We thank you for that. And we hope that you will have uh, a good rest of the week. And join us for episode 22 for Rummy Cube when we come back on Wednesday. I'm Jason DeCanio. Hope you have a good night. We will see you on Wednesday. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe to the Democratic Network for great more content like this one.